I have three supervisors that have failed in this field. What's interesting to me, because I'm in a learning curve too, they each pretend to have a relationship with me that they do not have. Mm -hmm. I guess that's an intimidation tactic. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you felt that way. This Fonnie Willis story keeps getting more and more interesting. You all saw that I covered the Fonnie Willis story about the hearing she's having to remove her from the Donald Trump trial in Atlanta and Fulton County. Getting removed from the Donald Trump case might be the least of her worries. If you had to give me a sentence, what is the sentence theme? Once I told him about his respectfully and in an email about his lack of leadership and the fact that he wanted to do things with grants that were impossible. And I kept telling him like, we can't do that and questioning stuff. He would take me off projects, tell people I wasn't doing what I was supposed to because I questioned him. Because I understood, I helped write that grant. I knew what was in that grant. He told everybody in front of Crystal, Deontay, everybody, we're gonna get MacBooks, we're gonna do that, we're gonna get swag, we're gonna use it for travel. I said, you cannot do that. It's a very, very specific grant. Took me off. I questioned Junior DA. There's kids in there from out of the, the, um, the county, all this. Took me off Junior DA. I did not want to do it. He made it look as if I wasn't doing what I needed to do because I questioned him. Because so, I knew for a fact Mr. Cuffey respectfully did not know what he was doing. So, period. So I respect that is your assessment. Um, it was clear to me that you and Mr. Cuffey were not getting along. And I'm not saying that your assessment is wrong. I want you to really listen to the words I'm saying. Cuffy, and this is my personal opinion to one woman to another, is dangerous to your administration. He tells people, when I reached out to you, he told me, oh, um, you think your word is safe? Um, and exactly when you reached out to Miss uh, Willis, she called me and told me, she tell me everything. So once you reach out to her, she's gonna reach up back out to me. So I didn't even go to HR okay, because he put Dexter's something? name on my PDP and I didn't even feel safe going to anybody. Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. I have three supervisors that have failed in this field. What's interesting to me, because I'm in a learning curve too, they each pretend to have a relationship with me that they do not have. Mm -hmm. I guess that's an intimidation tactic. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that you felt that way, but you, Dexter certainly don't have no relationship with uh, right. Michael Cuffey. You were safe to go those places. That young lady heard on the recording, Amanda Timpson shortly thereafter was fired from that position after reaching out to Fonnie Willis to express some issues she was having with her top aide, Michael Cuffey. Now this is all alleged, but it's funny, this stuff is rolling out slowly but surely. But I thought it was interesting because last week, I don't necessarily go looking for these things, but sometimes they just kind of become a big story and you're like, oh, you're just curious. You're like, whatever, without context. This recording puts this video that I'm about to show you into further context. As you know, the federal government is getting involved. Congressman Jim Jordan has weighed in on the subject and actually had this to say, and then I'm gonna tell you exactly how these two things are connected. I'm not sure if uh, Jimmy Kimmel understood what the title of this uh, conversation is. What you talking about, Willis? Bonnie <laughs> yeah. Willis. Uh, did she get back to you today? Yeah, we subpoenaed her. Not yet. Um, I just talked Wait, to her. Wait, is she supposed to get back to you today? Yeah, she's supposed to get documents. Well, to did us. you hear from her boyfriend? We haven't. So some. I was talking about this in the office, and I said, I said, Fonnie Wade, and it was like a Freudian slip, you know, like I, I, it's Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade. So, uh, uh, no, we haven't heard back from her yet, we'll from, but there's a whistleblower in her office who we have talked to, our, the committee staff. Yeah, and she, uh, the whistleblower, uh, I think she's like four foot 11, but Fonnie Willis had seven police like escort her out when, when she fired this lady, because this lady raised the concern that Miss Willis was not spending federal funds and the appropriate, not following the grant, uh, the rules of the grant and, and, and the grant dollars in the, in the appropriate manner. So uh, she raised this concern and then finally Willis fired her. She's now talking with our office and we'll see where that goes. And that's why we, we subpoenaed for records and documents related to this. We'll see what we get. Uh, there's still a few hours left in today. She also was interesting. 
She, instead of accepting service on the subpoena, she made us send the U.S. Marshals. Even though our office had talked with her office, we've had correspondence back and forth, she made the U.S. Marshals take the subpoena there. So uh, go figure. This is Bonnie Willis, and we all saw her, I think, her attitude on display when she took the, took the I stand thought it a few was weeks a, ago. I thought it was a skit, but I think it actually was real life. So mind you, all this was released around January 31st, so a whole month ago. This information was leaked. The whistleblower that Jim Jordan is talking about is allegedly the same young lady in the recorded audio, Amanda Timpson. So yeah, that puts something interesting on this uh, Fonnie Willis situation. One of the headlines here reads, says Fonnie Willis claims her whistleblower was a poor employee. Office-wide emails say otherwise. Says here, report unveils audio of staffer warning Georgia prosecutor of federal money being misspent ahead of firing. In newly published audio, an employee warned Georgia's Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis in November 2021 about the potential misuse of federal funds just weeks before the worker was fired. The staffer, Amanda Timpson, can be heard in roughly two minutes of a longer conversation published by the Washington Free Beacon on Wednesday telling Willis about a clash with her manager, Michael Cuffey, about his alleged plans to do impossible things with grant money. Timpson suggested Cuffey took her off projects because she questioned him about the money allocated for gang prevention initiative, and she feared retaliation because Cuffey allegedly claimed Willis told him everything. The district attorney fired Timpson less than two months later, after which Timpson began taking legal action against Willis and her office, including a whistleblower complaint that alleged wrongful termination. A spokesperson for Willis has said inadequate performance led to the firing, although the Free Beacon said that neither Willis nor her office responded to requests for comment. Cuffey who noted he left the DA's office in 2021, December 2021, for personal reasons, decried what he said was a money grab for Timpson. Willis is now leading a racketeering and election interference case against former President Donald Trump and others. The defendants have pleaded not guilty in the trial against the former president is slated to begin during the heart of the 2024 election cycle in which he seeks another term in the White House. And that's where it's interesting because... Because for that very reason, now everything that Fonnie Willis does is under a microscope. Any slight air of impropriety or any slight issue, anything that can be examined and looked at as a potential corruption, like her relationship with Nathan Wade, all these things, it's, it's really making a bad situation for her. It's almost a zero-sum game. She definitely went all in and going for these racketeering charges against Trump and his co-defendants. But is she in a position to actually win? This is a kamikaze mission. And unfortunately, when you get into something like this, all of the skeletons in your closet will be examined. Everything will be highlighted. So that's how we get to the phone records of your lead prosecutor being examined to pinpoint him at a specific location close to the vicinity of the place that you are living. So, I mean, I know Fani gives off the appearance of being tough and the people that actually are in her corner are cheering that on. But unfortunately, it's exposing her every day it goes. Like I said, this came out in January, at the end of January. And then she wasn't responding to a congressional subpoena so much so they had to serve her with the u.s marshals that's what i'm saying she must be thinking she bit off more than she could chew this is a lot potential jail time being removed from the position all four jobs she really said she didn't want to do becoming da and uh, somebody brought up a interesting point about the fact that she doesn't have much her background is civil litigation and so going into this position you can see why she was making such wide, broad accusations in, in, in effort to, I guess, affect the change of some kind, the RICO charges, maybe the overreaching and misuse of RICO charges against gangs and every member and celebrities especially.
Any rapper in Atlanta has a target on their back when Fonnie Willis got in there. If they were affiliated with any street organization or gang, you, you were about to get a RICO charge. That's how Young Thug goes away. That's how, what is a RICO charge in Georgia? RICO means racketeer influence and corrupt organizations. Under the Georgia RICO law, it is a crime for any person through a pattern of racketeering activity to acquire or maintain any interest in or control of any type of property or business. Is that what Donald Trump is being, Donald Trump and his co-defendants are being charged with? Because uh, honestly, and I'm being impartial here, what it looks like is they were doing what any campaign would be doing to a place where they're in the polls and it's a tight race. They'd be reaching out to people and trying to find out if there was any election interference. And they'd be also trying to find out if there's any way that they can get the last votes that they need, that they were in contact with people on the ground in that location. It doesn't necessarily mean that they were breaking the law to interfere in the election. A person may be charged with RICO, OCGA 1614-4, if they participate in an interrelated pattern of criminal activity motivated by or resulting in monetary gain or economic or physical threat or injury. So we got to ask ourselves if this case continues and the Fulton County DA's office is still prosecuting the case, does what the Trump campaign did in Atlanta constitute a RICO charge? It remains to be seen, but she's got bigger fish to fry. When you got Congress subpoenaing you for, you know, potential misuse of funds, like I said, it's all alleged, but doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. Anyway, I want to know what you think about it in the comments. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification for all uploads. If you want to watch more, please watch one of these videos down below. This is Fawcett Media.